Hey guys, Keaton here from TechSmart, and today we're going to be comparing the old generation or the original iPad mini, the first 7.9 inch tablet out of the Cupertino company known as Apple, to the brand new iPad mini 2 or the iPad mini with Retina display. So both these tablets do feature a lot to offer, so let's go ahead and jump into the hardware and specifications. So hopping right into specifications here, the iPad mini with Retina display features a 7.9 inch Retina display with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixels per inch of 326 as the iPad Air features a 9.7 inch retina display again with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixels per inch of 264. The pixels per inch doesn't really matter it's just obviously you're getting a bigger screen so you're going to be packing fewer pixels within it. So in terms of processing power here they both feature the A7 chip which is uh, which features the 64-bit architecture in there followed by the M7 coprocessor and the A7 processor is a dual core chip clocks in at 1.3 gigahertz and both of these tablets feature about a gigabyte of RAM. Both of these tablets claim to to have 10 hours of battery life and we'll take a look at that a little bit later. The iPad mini weighs in at 12 ounces as the iPad Air comes in at 17 ounces. So definitely a weight difference for uh, definitely a weight difference there and if that's a big thing for you, that's something to go ahead and consider. Both of these guys feature a 5 megapixel iSight camera on the rear with 1080p HD video recording and a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera with 720p HD video quality. They both are 7.5 millimeters in thickness or thinness, whatever floats your boat and that's insanely thin and the iPad Air is definitely reminiscent to the uh, iPad mini, so that's super cool. They both feature LTE and both come in two colors, space gray and silver, definitely the hottest colors of these iPads, and I'm kind of happy they went with that over featuring a gold model, but that's just my two cents. Starts so off in terms at of $399 for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model, definitely a step up from last year, and for the LTE model, as it's available on all four carriers, uh, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile within the United States, for the 16 gigabyte model, it's going to go ahead and run you $529. On the other hand here, the iPad Air also does feature LTE and if you want to go ahead and check out a 16 gigabyte model Wi-Fi it's going to run you around $499 and you can go ahead and upgrade that all the way to 128 gigabytes on both of these tablets here and if, again if you want to check out the LTE model it's going to run you around $629 for 16 gigabyte cellular model so both of these guys are very similar and they're a little they're a little too similar with the amount of thickness size but keep in mind the screen's different and the weight is different on these guys but it's going to be very interesting to see how they hold up in other fields so up next here is software so both of these guys are running iOS 7, the latest operating system from the Cupertino giant Apple. And I got to tell you, iOS 7 is an absolute treat to use. And I always keep saying that because you don't realize how great and awesome it is until you come from previous OSs such as iOS 5 or iOS 6 that were pretty much clunky and just the same OS with a few new features in here. So this is a complete redesign. It's skinless. It's nice. It feels good. It's sleek. And it really complements the Apple devices nicely. So for example, we have iTunes radio in here, which will go ahead and allow you to listen to other stations and you can just go ahead and test out each and every song. Say you wanted to search Avicii. Say that was your favorite artist. I know one of the songs is overplayed, but setting it all aside here, you're going to get other songs similar to this. So this is like Pandora and it's just a nice way to go ahead and listen to music if you're just kind of sick and tired of the traditional music you have on there. Also Siri is revamped on here so you can go ahead and hear more commands from her. You can go ahead and become more intuitive with her and it actually has a second gender, which is the male gender. So that's kind of cool and I'm a big fan that it's kind of out of the beta phases here and now that I can really use Siri to its full ability. And finally here, this is just one of the millions of features we have on iOS 7. You have a toggle bar, so you can just go ahead and swipe up from the bottom portion of your display. You'll see all your quick toggles, and you can go ahead and swipe down, and you'll see your notification center. So overall, iOS 7 rocks on both these devices, and it's definitely a treat to use for whichever tablet you pick. So up next here is the display. Now I have to tell you guys, before we go any farther, the display on both of these tablets is just absolutely mind melting, blowing, erupting. Every single adjective that can describe a massive explosion is exactly what these tablets are. The iPad mini 2 or the iPad mini with retina display is the sort of new to the bunch here and it features a retina display and it looks fantastic. We've seen this before on the full fledged iPad so it's nothing new here but it just looks super crisp and the accents on the side, the thinness, it really complements everything but getting back to the display side here, content flies off the page, text is super crisp clear and crisp and it is just a treat to go and watch movies play games browse the web edit if you want to edit with iMovie. Just do normal day-to-day -day functions and this tablet can even do higher grade stuff and 
That's why I love the iPad line. And I'm not trying to go all fanboy here, but the displays on these things are some of the highest that I've ever seen in any type of tablet, and it was just an absolute pleasure to use. So overall, you cannot go wrong with either tablet as they both are rocking high quality pixel dense displays. So moving on here is benchmarks. So this goes ahead and lets spec heads like myself know how great these tablets truly are. And it really gives a good representation of a nice unified score. So we're gonna be using two tests, Geekbench 3 and GFX Bench 2.5 Egypt HD to go and test out the overall performance and the graphic performance. So I'll get back to you once the results are in. So the iPad Air received a single core score of 1479 and a multi-core score of 2686 as the iPad Mini with Retina Display received a single core score of 1390 and a multi-core score of 2507. So both of these guys are neck and neck and it just goes to show you that the iPad Air is just a tad bit faster in the overall benchmark. So sticking with the benchmarks here, let's go ahead and check out GFX Bench 2.5 Egypt HD on screen. Boy, that was a mouthful. So this will go ahead and test the graphics performance of both tablets here, and the results might surprise you. So let's go ahead and check them out. So the iPad Air received a frames per second score of 48 frames per second, as the iPad Mini 2 or the iPad Mini with Retina Display received a frames per second score of 49. So they're pretty much neck and neck. It doesn't really make a difference that one is one more frame per second better, as you could test this out a million times and always get different results. That's what I really love about all of these tests but this is just again a well-rounded benchmark so overall here the graphics performance here is fantastic it's definitely neck and neck again and your graphics experience on here will definitely be pleasurable on both of these tablets Furthermore here, it's the camera. So the camera on both of these tablets are the exact same. They both feature a five megapixel rear facing camera with 1080p HD video capabilities. And on the front here, they feature a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera with 720p HD video. So it's gonna be fine for both scenarios. If you wanna use it for FaceTime, selfies, Skype, or even Snapchat in that regard, it's gonna be great for the front facing camera. It's gonna be grainy. You gotta keep that in mind. And pretty much any type of photo you take on here, it will be grainy. The moment you start to think or analyze photos and videos on here, you're doing yourself a disjustice because this is not a high-end smartphone and this is by no means a DSLR. So it's okay, it's, it's good enough for what it is, it'll get you by and people can actually distinguish that it's actually you in the photo or your subject that you're taking it of, but as soon as they start to zoom in or start to analyze it, they're gonna notice the pixels and how grainy it truly is. And it's kind of a shame that we have such a beautiful display and this is the technology that's incorporated on it. I would have loved to see an eight megapixel camera on this device, but unfortunately we are left in the dust. So hopefully next year we'll get to go ahead and see that. And I'm hoping that uh, tablet cameras are starting to evolve and become something bigger than they currently are. So overall, I was a big fan of the camera, and I thought the photos that I took within the video and after the fact turned out pretty good for the most part. But again, just keep in mind, it's not high quality good goodness stuff, and that's the same thing for the video. Additionally, it's battery life, and I gotta tell you guys, battery life on here, it's pretty fantastic. Apple's claiming both 10 hours on the iPad mini and the iPad Air, and I'd say that's somewhat accurate to a degree. It's a bit over-exaggerated, but then again, Apple has completely changed my entire mindset as the new uh, MacBook Airs this year just last for days upon days. So in terms of battery life, I was able to get around seven and a half to eight hours on both of these tablets here. And it really just comes down to how much are you using the tablet? Are you using it for casual web browsing, maybe tweeting every now and then? Are you using it to watch videos, surf the web, play games? And that's just what it came down to. When I was doing leisure-like tasks, I was able to get around seven and a half to eight hours, but I was really going hard in the paint and just trying to just use this tablet for what it is and the gorgeous display that it features. I was able to get around more, more like six hours on both of these guys here. Keep in mind they feature this same specifications, so one doesn't have an advantage over the other by any means. If the only real disadvantage the iPad Air has is the battery has to power more pixels, but all that aside, I'd say battery life was fantastic on both these guys, and it will get you definitely through a day, depending on how long your day is. For me, my day is not too long with these tablets. Last but definitely not least here is the new features. So both these guys are running one of the biggest new features here, and that's iOS 7. The iPad Air comes in at the same amount of thickness the iPad Mini does. It features two of the same colors, which we saw with the iPhone 5, space gray and silver. And I'd say one of the biggest ones here is the iPad Mini with Retina Display finally getting a Retina Display. And I just think that's absolutely fantastic. These tablets are fun to hold. They're great. They're snappy. They're fast, especially with the A7 processor followed by 64-bit architecture and the M7 co-processor really morphing together to give you a nice pleasurable experience on both of these tablets. 
So overall, if I had to make a recommendation in terms of which type of tablet is right for you, if you're looking for the best price and probably the best size here, I'd go with the iPad mini with Retina display. It comes in at a great price of just $399, definitely $70 more than the previous generation, but you can kind of account for that as we're getting faster internals and we're getting a gorgeous Retina display. But if you're not big into smaller size and you don't mind spending the extra $100 or so, at least for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model, check out the iPad Air. It's thin, it's sleek, it definitely feels like a souped up iPad mini and it just feels fantastic in the hands and I gotta tell you guys I love both of these tablets and it's very hard to kind of pick one as my daily tablet so to speak so I think I'll just go ahead and keep both of them and just keep using them and alternating between them because I truly did enjoy every moment of each of these tablets. Thank you guys so much for watching this video where we directly compared all the glitz, glam, specifications, hardware, all the shebang of the brand new iPad mini with retina display to the slightly older by a few weeks iPad Air. I had an absolute blast comparing these devices as they are super cool tablets. They feature great screens, great battery lives, and just offer a lot to the table. So if you guys enjoyed this direct comparison and want more content, go and give this video a like as it truly helps the channel out a bunch and lets me know you guys want more comparisons like this. I got a few more current phones coming in and definitely a lot more tablet coverage coming from you guys so you go ahead and give me a like and it lets me know you guys want more content like this drop me a comment down below letting me know what you think of the ipad mini with retina display is it worth it for you is the extra 70 dollars too much for your budget and you're just probably going to upgrade to the bigger tablet again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below also go and subscribe to the channel if you want to be first to be notified when i produce a brand new video on some awesome cool content we got coming up remember we have a few we got about i'd say five six weeks weeks left in the year of 2013 and there's tons of more tech coming we got more curvy phones the mac pro and just a lot more great tech content so to go ahead and subscribe it's free who doesn't like free things you can either click on screen right now there will be an annotation or you can click in the mid section of your browser and it'll let you know first when i produce a brand new video and it'll deliver it right to your subscriptions box so thank you guys once again and i look forward to seeing you in my next video Bye bye